So it's recording, so just tell me who you are. Okay. <laughs> Wait, shoot! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am Al Fox. I am from New York, but I live in Utah now, and I am an LDS blogger and YouTuber and speaker. <laughs> well, I was outside and I was helping someone move and I saw them, you know, come around the corner wearing their suits, riding the bikes with the helmets and, and I had no idea who they were because I had never heard of the church before and they came up to me and they said, hey, do you want to know more about Christ? And I said, no, no, right? Because religion, it was kind of, you know, I grew up Catholic, but what was religion going to do for me? I wasn't religious at all, um, but I felt bad. You know, because they're just really precious looking. And so I said, you know, if you bring me a steak dinner to eat, I'd listen. And I thought, you know, who would do that? You know, that'll get rid of them, right? And they actually did. They came back that day, um, and I felt obligated. So that's how it started, was out of obligation and a steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a better way of doing missionary work. So. Yep, so food, you know. Heavenly Father knew it might be <laughs> Okay, so when they first started teaching me, um, I didn't want to listen. I didn't care, but, but I would see them every day because I just loved how I felt around them. But I didn't know why. I didn't know what it was. And so for a few weeks, you know, a couple weeks, I would have them over every day, but I would try so hard to talk about anything except what they wanted to talk about. Um, and one day, you know, we were watching a video called The Restoration. DVD, and this is when, um, you know, Christ and Heavenly Father appear to Joseph Smith, and I remember thinking, this is silly, like, this place probably doesn't even exist, and turns out, you know, I was a half hour away from Palmyra, New York, and I had no idea, and so it started when we were in the sacred grove, and my elders, they made me pray, and I'd never prayed before, ever, um, and I didn't want to, and so... They said the prayer, and I had to repeat after them. That was my first time praying because I felt so awkward and because I didn't know how to do it. And they made me ask if the church were true or not, right? Because I was repeating after them. And it was then that I found out God is real. But not only that, but He in reality speaks to us. And it wasn't until I said that prayer asking that I started to care. And then I, you know, started to need to know if it were true or not. The difference it's been, you know, having, having God in your life is huge. It's huge, especially coming from my background, you know. I often thought people who turned to religion did it because they wanted some sort of comfort if they were having a hard time. Uh, and that wasn't my story that's not my story you know I found God when I thought I was happy when I thought this is as good as life can get and it's not the case I have learned and relearned and felt and refelt that only with God only with his help and his direction and his ways am I this happiness that I didn't even know existed like a real physical a physical happiness that you can really feel and I only feel that if I turn to prayer, if I turn to reading scriptures, um, and you know, the contrast is huge. It's absolutely huge. And, and it's made all the difference, not just with my happiness, but I'm able to, to keep going when things are so hard. I'm able to over, uh, overcome and conquer things I never thought I would overcome and conquer things I thought I would be stuck with the rest of my life, things who made me who I was. I'm more, you know, I'm able to make huge decisions and to feel confident behind them, to feel peace and to know that what I'm doing is right, you know, because of God, because of being able to speak to Him. So since joining the church, um, since feeling and finding this happiness, you know, I didn't know existed, it was actually, I had to go through hard times in trials that I would not have gone through if I didn't get baptized. 
um, since baptism, you know, I never felt lonely in my life until I got baptized. You know, I didn't have any problems with my family until I got baptized. And, like, things were hard. Things were really difficult since joining the church. You know, I can't tell you how many times I found myself on my knees screaming at Heavenly Father saying, like, I can't do this. Like, I'm not that strong. How many times I felt completely and physically alone. How many times I felt so confused and upset and, and offended even. But what it comes down to is prayer, really. Honest prayer. Where you can ask Him anything. And in our end, a decision. You know, it, it relies wholly on us because he, he doesn't ever leave us. It, it's usually always on our end. And what's really helped me is, you know, making that decision and being firm in it. You know, to choose who you want to follow, choose to trust, choose to have faith, choose to keep going. And that is when Henry Follery falls through with his promises and your faith is strengthened and, and blessings and opportunities come. So people who are struggling um, having faith, start from the beginning acting like you don't know anything. Start from the basis. I think it's really important if you have a question, don't turn to the internet. Don't turn to you know other people. It's important. Like If you want to know if God's there, ask Him. Ask Him. If you have a question, ask Him. Um, and just focus on how you feel. Focus on the difference. And don't quit after one prayer. Don't quit, you know. Um, it was weeks that I met with the elders, and, and I put no, you know, I would listen. And it wasn't until I finally tried, a real try, a consistent try, you know, put it to the test, if you may, that I started to overcome and conquer. And to just keep in mind, you know, one, be honest. Turn to the right sources. If you want to know if God's real, turn to Him and not anyone else. And to not give up. Just don't give up and to just allow that time. Allow yourself to, to adjust and to listen and to see the difference. What it comes down to is forget not whose hands you're in. To forget not what we are part of, what we have. To forget not that, you know, you have a God. You have a God and He is yours. Like, yours to keep. Yours to turn to always. And the power behind that when you remember that. Because God, you know, how powerful. He has all the power. And if He is for you, if He is yours, like, you can overcome and conquer everything and, and it's so easy to lose sight of that it's so easy to lose sight you know of that love that's real for uh, for us and to lose sight that he will do everything to, to allow us to return home that was part of his plan the whole time is to return to him and and if we think he's going to do anything to stop that from happening we're wrong You know, hard times will consistently be there, but so will Christ.